Before humans arrived, around 120 species of land mammal, excluding bats, occurred in the Caribbean region. Many have now gone extinct, some of them very recently, with possibly only 15 surviving today, of which 13 are species of the Hutia and two are species of the Solenodon. Two of these species are the Hispaniolan Solenodon, Solenodon paradoxus, and the Hispaniolan Hutia, Plagodontia adium. Over the past century, both species have always been considered very rare, and at times even thought to be extinct by many naturalists. At the moment, both species are classified by the IUCN as endangered. The Hispaniolan Hutia, a large arboreal rodent, and the Solenodon, a large insectivorous shrew-like mammal, inhabit a range of forest types across the Dominican Republic and a small part of Haiti. Along with its Cuban sister species, the Hispaniolan Solenodon diverged from other mammals over 70 million years ago and therefore represents a huge amount of unique evolutionary history. So this is one of the most unusual mammals in the world. You can see its really long nose, which is very mobile. You can see it moving from left to right and uses that for jabbing into the ground to look for, uh, feel for and smell for bugs in the ground to eat. And you can see those really long and strong whiskers there, which he'll, he'll use to feel around when he's foraging the leafless there. I found, after about a month of field work, I found one or two fragmentary bits of cylindron, and in that same time period we found literally thousands of remains of species which are now extinct. And it's, it's raising interesting questions that maybe Selenodons might have been rare um, throughout history or longer ago into the past than we think. So maybe it, it poses different questions about what the threat factors are that are, that are facing the species today. So studying the remains of, of these extinct mammals from caves like this can really give an understanding of, of what drove extinctions in the past and what we can learn about that for conservation in the present. There is so little information on even their most basic ecology that it is impossible to design a comprehensive conservation plan and to evaluate the success of any management efforts. About three years ago we actually uh, put together an expedition, a simple expedition to go to the Dominican Republic and to speak to various um, organizations that are working in the, in the area on how we could start a project um, not just on Salinodons but also in Boutiers and also look at, we were looking at iguanas in the area as well. After this first approach, several questions arise. Which is the current status of these species? Which is their geographic and genetic distribution? Which are their main threats? Which is the attitude and knowledge of the local community toward these species? In early 2009, a collaboration of UK and Dominican partners received a Darwin Initiative grant from the UK government to run a three-year project based in the Dominican Republic. The goal was to start answering these crucial questions and to build the supporting capacity needed to plan the conservation of these species. The project collaboration comprises Darrell Wildlife Conservation Trust, Sociedad Ornitológica de la Española, the Zoological Society of London, the National Zoological Park of the Dominican Republic, the Minister of Environment and Natural Resources of the Dominican Republic, and a number of associate organizations that will support the environmental awareness and education of the local communities. We have a whole range of different techniques that are available for us to use. These are tools that will allow us to understand where the animals are, how many there are. We also use um, uh, telemetry um, in order to uh, look at uh, or try to investigate home ranges of the, of the species. We use uh, satellite imagery, for example, as a means of understanding destruction of the habitat. 
deforestation is likely to be the most direct threat to the ongoing survival of both species. Well, we are standing on an old charcoal oven, and you can see around there are a lot of trees that were just cut down. Definitely, this is, this is a big impact, uh, not only for the salinodon, but for all other uh, species and fauna as well. And, uh, and, uh, and, you, and you can see the, the, the whole forest have a lot of pressure. Hispaniolan jutias are partly arboreal mammals that feed on leaves, fruit, shoot, and bark, and so may be more dependent than solenodons on the presence of forested environments. In some areas, small populations that survive in forest fragments set within agricultural landscapes may be coming into conflict with people, as villagers often complain of crop damage caused by hutias. As forest habitat becomes increasingly fragmented, the human-animal conflict may also escalate. The hutia also used to be hunted opportunistically as a source of food in the Dominican Republic, and this still occurs in southern Haiti. Solenodons may be affected by invasive mammal species, and in particular, there appears to be evidence of frequent killing of solenodons by both domestic and feral dogs. Now, this species have been in Dominican Republic or in the island, in whole island, for 76 million years. And it's pretty amazing as these people don't know actually anything. Most of the people we ask, is, uh, in the city especially, they don't know anything about they have this endemic animal from this island. Hispaniola used to be two different or even three different small islands which collided about five million years ago and jointly created this large island called Hispaniola. And it's very unique that it has several species of everything. The Solenodon has a large variance in its size and its appearance, especially southern population to northern populations, indicating they actually might be two cryptic evolutionary trajectories, evolutionary units, and maybe even different species. The genetics is one of the tools which allows us to investigate this further. There's a path along here where the Selenodon have been walking in and out. And in fact, there's just a few scratches on this route here um, that you can see, whereas they, as they're clawing in and out, they're uh, making those marks. And just as a final bit of uh, clue, there's nose pokes just next to the cave um, where the Selenodon um, have been digging into the ground. At the moment we have uh, collected animals from different areas, we know more about the distribution of the species, we do need to get more of an idea of how many they, there may be in a particular habitat because ultimately we need to find out what the population sizes are in order to see whether they are viable into the future. They are emblems to, for conservation, not just of themselves, but also of the species that are found within habitats in which they're found. The project will produce a wide range of scientific publications, including maps of species distribution and priority conservation zones, in order to create evidence-based species action plans. In the longer term, it will set the baseline to broaden scientific knowledge of these species and will build conservation capacity in the region. This new data will also enable scientists to study the other last survivors in the Caribbean, revealing another piece of the puzzle of evolution, which will provide crucial information to build a better future.